Hello friends, have I got a thing for you right now? J okay, just look at the names on the list here and you should you should know exactly what's going on. Uh, oh, and I'm casting a 3v3 too, I don't usually do that. Anyway, this is going to be freaking insane. I think all of you should know basically all of these players. You may not have seen one or two of them, but uh, most of you will know exactly who all of them are. Sinister, of course, kind of a legend because he was the guy who was running the Artifact Cup way back in the day. He did that for a long time. Uh, a Game Anx, um, who is the one who sent me this replay, obviously goes without saying, you know, one of the one of the most well-known figures of DOK. Um, and Last Rites, the caster uh, himself, although he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't make as many videos these days um, as he used to, but he's still obviously a pretty core member of the community, he's pretty good himself. And that's gonna be, they're all gonna be on a team here, and then we've got Tren, our salty boy, we love him <laughs> for all of his salt dumping. Also kind of a caster, but again, kind of like Last Rites, doesn't make too much stuff these days. Cow of Schmau, someone you should know maybe from the two of, uh, 2v2 League. And 10th Wave, uh, used to be a moderator on the Discord. Um, also a freaking has-been, no, just kidding, but a uh, pretty fun member of the community too. And they're all in a 3v3, playing on one of the new maps, playing on A-Game's uh, balance patch. Like, this is... This is pretty sick. I, I can't lie. I'm personally not a big fan of 3v3s. I think you probably knew this already. I just, you know, I don't see it as being quite so quite so deep as, as 1v1s. But uh, when you give me the roster of players and it looks like this, I really can't say, oh yeah, this is just going to be trash. No, this is, a, this is something exciting. So, <clears throat> I hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I hope our frame rate doesn't get absolutely trashed. Now one thing I gotta... <laughs> One thing I gotta mention here, this map is huge, like, I actually can't cover all of it with my camera particularly well. It's, um, you should know this map from the campaign. That's, of course, where all of the new maps come from. Uh, you know, you start up here out by the Kalash Wreck. They're actually, oh, there's a base there. Oh, I didn't actually know that. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, there's a base there, too. That, that one's a little far, isn't it? Artifact spawns in the middle, it looks like. But yeah, I, I suspect that the valley was only really going to be used for these artifact extractions. Most of the fighting probably will go on over here because of the bases that are there. And the extraction zones. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you probably have played the map Kalosh, uh... What is it called now? I can't remember, but it's the 6... Uh, sorry, it's the 3v3 map that takes place right here. This one basically just takes place here instead. Um, and it's very interesting how that small change makes a very big difference on how the map plays. So let's let's talk about the factions here. We got A game playing as the coalition. He's getting AV fabrication fairly early. A couple of LAVs coming out now. He is also already on his second base, so pretty standard opener from him there. Same thing from Sinistro, who's playing as the Galzian. I like those colors, by the way. I'm not sure if I've actually ever seen him in game personally. Um, but yeah, he looks like a B, I guess. Uh, I'll talk about what Cow's doing in just a second. We got Last Rise playing as Soban. That's pretty standard. Um, and he will be enjoying the fact that Savon is much more playable in this mod here, certainly. Oh, I thought the yellow bar was like a production queue. I was like, what is he making that takes this long and is that close to being finished? That's his health. But yeah, he has not gone for a, uh, what would you call it? He's not gone for a support cruiser just yet. Let me give him, let me give these guys some numbers. Over here, Tren, our salty, our salty legend, is getting railgun fabrication fairly early, but he first went up onto his second base. Uh, Cow of Schmau, what is he doing? So he's the guy who had tons of sand and he still has him out in middle, and it looks to me as though he just wants to try and take that middle base there. This is a very interesting idea for a strategy, but there are AAVs coming out and nothing really to support, so I think he's gonna have to fall back, but... I don't know. I don't know. He's getting a soul chip fabrication. no, that's Sinistro. <laughs> Four is him. He's getting a gun fabrication just like Tren, which would be a good counter to these guys, but, uh... Yeah, he's not going to have anything there to support for a while. So yeah, production crews are going to be forced to fall back. Um, and then up here, 10th wave, as the Soban as well, it looks like. And he's getting railgun fabrication as well as powers. Oh my gosh. Well, I, that's a... Uh, <laughs> I think we all know what that means, but anyway. Uh, worth noting also, Tran has picked up an artifact. He's going to be trying to extract now. It looks like 10th wave is going to lose a base runner right here. Um, and then Sinistro, also with an artifact, going to want to extract that one. And based on the way map control looks right now, I'd say that... I'd say Trin gets this artifact out, because uh, if he just gets, like, I don't know, like, one Assault Railgun over there, he can basically, he can basically get that one out. There's also an AV here from 10th Wave, although our upgrades are up on last right, so he should win that one. Oh, but there's a Heavy Railgun right here, so if Cal and 10th Wave can just coordinate a little bit here, they, they should be completely fine. 
Uh, and A game already going for bombers. That's pretty interesting to see. We do have some uh, strike fighters out for him already. And Sinistro going for interceptors, so lots of air tech coming out on that side. No secondary tech being researched on the red team just yet. So yeah, AVs have seen the danger, they're just gonna smoke and back away. I just realized now how very, very flat this section here is. Although there might be, like, actual high ground, it's just a little bit difficult to see how it's not act- Yeah, it is kind of sloping down, isn't it? But the way it's super flat means railguns are definitely gonna dominate this area. Uh, Blast Drone gets a pretty, pretty nasty hit right there. You just look at the army presence on the map. There's really not much for the uh, for the green team, but they have air units um, coming, right? Oh, and look, they're actually getting launched now. So definitely, they're they're going to be wanting to find some railguns if they can. Since we're just now finishing interceptor fabrication, so he's not going to have anything just yet. There's there's a lot more military I feel for the uh, for the red team, and double production crews are coming out here. Although they're actually not of the same team, it looks like. So it's Cow and Tren that are doing that. A cow after my own heart. Mm -hmm. Some heavy railguns gonna get picked off by the strike fighters here, and that's nice for a game, obviously. A couple of uh, sand skimmers going to the back lines, but they're not really gonna find anything there. Um, yeah, sand skimmers beat railguns, but not in this scenario, do they? Uh, Last right's just gonna easily clear that one out. Oh, those are actually LAVs, aren't they? They're, you know, blinking on the uh, strike fighters there. If the production cruisers stay nearby, it's difficult for these strike fighters to get any kills on them, right? But eventually, uh, like, for instance, when bombers come out, that could change. And there's also going to be a gunship coming out from A-game. Now, I'd like to point out, uh, the bomber and the gunship are... They are actually strong units in vanilla, but in, like, the gunship very, very situationally, and then it gets countered, like, almost without trying to. And the bomber, kind of, in a weird way where it's very expensive to, like, get it. So, these units, we don't really see very much normally. But in uh, in A-Games patch, they're much more viable. I say as it picks off only one assault railgun, but that was some pretty good splitting from Tren, you must agree. So, And that's what we'd expect to see. I mean, I should stress again, this is going to be a very high-level 3v3. I mean, all of these players are at least, like, high mid-tier or higher. Like, none of them are none of them are plebs. So we're definitely going to have some, some good gameplay right here. Gunship comes in, and I think that's the real target. Yep, he is going to target it. You can see he immediately retargets it onto the railguns. And look at that. The gunship actually does damage now, so that's pretty exciting. And he fires, like, the whole duration of his circle there, so he doesn't need to be... Oh, Bomber also targets the same units. It's maybe a little bit wasteful, but it still works. But yeah, so it doesn't need to be micro in order to actually, like, get value out of it. Going to kill off some LAVs here, too. LAVs can fight back, but not very effectively. Um... That's also true in vanilla, but you're kind of surprised always, like, how well the LAVs manage to do killing off the, uh, the, the gunship. You're like, hmm, I've got a counter unit, but it's dying to the thing that it counters. That's not really, that's not the case in a games patch. Uh, Interceptor's also finding some targets, but they're gonna fall afoul of some missile batteries right here. Same with the strike fighters, if they come in too close, they're probably just gonna want to dock at this point. Um, you also need to be careful about base runners here. You see this guy nearly got killed by it. Base runners do have increased anti-air in this patch, so you need to be careful about that. Anyway, the red team had that uh, early... Oh yeah, another interceptor goes down. The red team had that early... Uh, that early map presence. They had much more army out on the field early, and they've used it to get these two bases, but I think they're going to be pushed back now. Because the railgun numbers obviously were better for the red team, but so many of them have been picked off by these strike fighters and such, that the railgun follow-up by last rights, and I should point out this is quite a follow-up. Definitely what he should have been doing. Um, so he's... I think he's done a good job seeing the opportunity there. Uh, is definitely going to take the field control now. A um, little bit of a yeah, a little bit of an opening like these sand skimmers have. Probably need to be staying with the AAVs there. Oh, what is that? Oh, the missile batteries. Oh, that was actually a lot more effective than I was expecting. And these assault railguns have somehow managed to get up on top of them too, which is not ideal. Huh? That's that's interesting. It looked very convincing right up until then. Um, AB's gonna smoke, and it looks like the uh, the green team's kind of backing out of here, but they are causing a lot of grief to this uh, mining base over here. Also, look at that. AAVs can actually kill assault railguns now. That's a really nice change, I think, because if you knew in vanilla, it they don't... Yeah, they, they can't kill them. It's just, like, actually impossible once you get, like, armored one or something. They do one damage per shot. Anyway, I think it's actually armored two, but you get the idea. This base here, definitely in danger. Um, Tren, I think, stands to lose a production cruiser here, though. It might be... Well, yeah, no, I guess he's actually going to be fine there. 
Um, but at any rate, the uh, the base definitely got shut down. This base definitely got pushed out. And the number of sand skimmers that's still out here, quite high. Um, they're going to be chewing up these missile batteries. Missile batteries are uh, trying to use the mortars to fight back, but at close range, that's obviously not ideal. And A-Game comes in with a big wing of uh, LAVs as well. And that gunship, still accruing value, has not get gotten taken out, which is uh, a nice change from vanilla. <laughs> Where I'm sure it would have died to, like, I don't know, a base runner just, like, casually shooting at it. They're not, like, that bad in vanilla, but they are pretty bad. Definitely needs to get out of here now, though. Yeah, I think he's going to go down. But I think that gunship definitely was worth it for May game. And he hasn't lost a bomber yet, though I believe he has lost a couple of strike fighters here and there. And sorry for the frame rate lag, by the way. I, I do try to get good frame rates when I record these things, but it just never happens. I think this uh, this particle effect here doesn't really help either. But the biggest thing is probably that the game is trying to handle commands of like tons of units everywhere. Um, that's just that's just how DOK is. So three v three is always get a bit laggy, even when you're playing them. Production crews are gonna get sniped here, and that's a nice pickup. Missile battery is still in the area, so uh, Sinistra will lose a couple interceptors for that, but I would take that trade any day. Although he's going to stick around, and this I'm not sure if I would take. Yeah, he's going to have to back away. I didn't think Production Cruisers got high ground advantage in A-Games patch. It may be that the plus shows up, but it doesn't actually do any more damage, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think they... I feel like that actually is doing high ground damage, which is not the intended function. Anyhow, it looks like the green team here... Um, thanks to LR's railguns, A-Games, uh, air units, and Sinistros, also air units, I guess. They've definitely taken control of the uh, the middle field right here. Sinistro probably wants to go to his extraction zone, but that's completely fine. Um, and he's going to be moving out into the middle with his carrier, too. Doesn't have too much power on that thing, but a little bit. <coughs> and are these uh, his sand skimmer? No, these are Last Rite's uh, LAVs moving out here. Lots of strike craft coming out on the red team side. Um... Lots. This is a bug of the replay viewer, obviously. We, we still don't really know why it does that. Uh, but let's see, what are they going for in terms of tech? So, Trend's got an honor guard cruiser fabrication. He probably has a couple out on the field then, huh? No, he actually doesn't. Cal hasn't gotten anything, it looks like, except for the uh, the missile batteries, which are probably going to be chunking away at the bomber and the gunship right there. Yeah, they're, or no, those were two bombers, so they're going to go down. That's a little sloppy of a game right there. Um, 10th wave still hasn't gone for any other tech except for missile batteries. So these guys still staying on the, on like mid-tier units, which is completely uh, valid as a strategy. Although it would be exciting to see some of the, um, the new, you know, the, like the, the higher tier units on the mod, obviously. So Sinistro must have extracted one because he does have a bit more power than I was expecting, but he's got it all in the weapons, so he moves at a snail's pace and can't actually hit anything. He's probably just more worried about the interceptors at the moment. But Tren has gotten uh, a, a, a good few of the guys, and he is going to actually take air superiority here. And this could be some real problems for Sinistro. He seems to recognize that he's backing away immediately. But I think he needs to be getting uh, missile ship fabrication at this point. Um, who are these? A-games. Yeah, these guys also probably need to be... They need to be covering... They need to be covering something at this point, because the interceptors are probably going to strike. So, I mean, if you look out on the green sides... Uh, you know, map, probably what would be attacked is the base, but there are a couple of guns exposed too. I'm wondering how much anti-air there is back at home. Uh, looks like, yeah, A-game has support cruiser anti-air. Last Rites does too. Um, still none for Sinistro, right, although he does have a couple interceptors, but he doesn't have the air superiority. So, this is definitely the weakest point. Maybe if they could send, like, some, some anti-air over there, that'd be good. Bit of a fight gonna go down here now. As a couple of uh, Last Rites Railguns are going to be kiting the AAVs, but the big story is he's actually got two battle cruisers coming in, which is uh, quite a bit of force, obviously. I don't think it would win against this number of Railguns, though. Um, they do have support, though, from the, uh, you know, support cruiser. That's what they do, is they give support. Probably he wants to smoke these and back away, though, because I think this is a fight he's going to lose. Ooh, yeah, you got to be getting out of here, mate. Oh, oh. So one battle cruiser goes down. Looks like railguns are actually going to prioritize that base runner first. Um, to be fair, they do get that very quickly. Most of the railguns are dead now, but uh, they've already done their damage, and now they're going to try to find a support cruiser here. And I think maybe they can do it. A-game's got AAVs here too that he could definitely smoke this with, but he's not going to. But he does get behind a line of sight blocker, I think. He does. 
So he's going to be safe there. One of Last Rite's support cruisers is going to go down, though. And now it's just one battle cruiser on its own trying to hold off this, uh, this army of railguns. This is uh, looking difficult. Like, this pocket of units is definitely easy to encircle and they're low on health. Oh, what's even going on? Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, so a bunch of sand skimmers came into the back lines here. I think they just killed a production cruiser. We just lost a production cruiser. Now, you notice A-game has got his missile batteries in the right place, though. I talked about how this was a vulnerability of their team. And he's got it ready to be covered. Um, so if Trent tries to launch the interceptors and come out there, he's going to run into those missile batteries. That's good. But the, uh, the red team being a little bit too passive here for my liking, I think they should notice that they've got a bit of a, a pocket opened up here and come in and squeeze on this base and kill everything that's there. Because these guys don't have much defense and it's worth quite a lot to A-game to keep them alive. So if you can just finish that off, that'd be nice. <coughs> oh, excuse me for my illness. Let's see, artillery coming out now for A-game. He did get Assault Cruiser Fabrication, I don't know if you saw that, and he's actually making one of them too. As well as a lot of LAVs, like that's, yeah, it's a couple of them. Would you say 20 counts as a couple? Not like a couple as in, you know, people who are together, but a couple as in a fair number. Uh, <laughs> Last Rites here, beginning to move out with his carrier now, which, you know, now that it's the patch can actually do something. But the big story is he's got a bunch of railguns here, and these are... Oh, there's a battle cruiser in the mix, okay. So this could be quite a lot of force right here. The carrier obviously can't go up to that high ground. This place just, it can't be uh, attacked with carriers. But um, the presence of the Savant carrier here, especially if he gets powers of two, could be pretty big out here in the middle. Some air fights were going on over there. I didn't uh, zoom in to check on that, sorry about that. But it looks like the interceptors just want to hunt down the stack go bomber, and that's their right, they will get it. One of them may go down, no, it's gonna be fine. And it's looking like the red team is really in control now, which is kind of surprising. They, they weren't earlier. Um, I feel like the red team had good control in the early game, then they got pushed back, and now they're, they're making a good push out of their own. Lots of railguns still out here up on this, uh, up on this high ground. Or, well, I, mean, I say high ground because it's the plateau, but you know. Uh, one thing to note, um, Hottest Man like, got really good at like, terrain uh, movement blockers and stuff, so he actually added this in as a pathway. Apparently it was quite difficult, but... This is a map that he made, right? I'm not just crazy. I'm pretty sure it was. Sinistro has gotten tactical bombers. How many? Just two. That's going to do well to take out the uh, the railguns, as you can see. And then interceptors launch from Tren, as he wants to capitalize on his opponent's launch there. But I think this is Sinistro. No, okay. Well, he definitely doesn't now. There, there's missile ships in the area, so the area is for him just getting wrecked here. Yeah, only three interceptors and a bomber left now, and he's definitely going to have to back away. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So artillery is out for a game now, and this can make a big difference when it comes to railgun fights. Um, like the one that I expect that we're going to see coming. I think it should be no question that they all have mag accelerator, but let's check the upgrades. Last strike's full on armor upgrades, and I think it's 10th wave with the railguns. Yeah, he's full as well. You'll notice, by the way, oh, they're both Savon. Never mind. That's kind of an invalid statement. But I think I was what I was gonna say is that Savon Railguns have changed. That they're not, they're not as obviously better than the Coalition ones, though they still are. Very nice mortars there, again. I think you really only hit your own units, but it's fine. <laughs> so the VCs and Railguns of uh, Last Rites here. Like, the, the fight starts coming on, these guys have high ground, but they're still losing, they're having to back away. I think that's good for the red team, though, as they're trading rather effectively, ha having that high ground. There's quite a concave setup here, if only that would actually increase DPS, right? But the AAVs are ready to stop the um, LAVs from pushing in, and A-game sees it, he's going to back away. There's also a missile battery here, it's going to cover nicely for anti-air, so... The air is launched, but it doesn't get too much value, does it? And there's only four railguns left now for the, for the green team. I think this fight is going the red team's way, although it's hard to say exactly how much value these battle cruisers will get. Anything going on elsewhere in the map? Not really, it seems to all be kind of focusing on this on this push right here. The assault cruiser is getting close and it hasn't really been targeted, which makes sense. You wouldn't think of it as a priority target, but like one tack missile right there. And that could be that could be curtains for the uh, for the red team. But no, it's gonna use its um, overcharge ability and run away here. Artillery now gonna be barraging. Is that landing short though? That is landing rather short. So I think that was good for the red team. They killed off a lot of Last Rites Railguns. They didn't take as many losses themselves, so they definitely still took a lot. 
I think both teams lost a lot of units right there. Trent's carrier doing its best to uh, bond with the surrounding rocks, but he can't quite get up the hill there. There's three assault cruisers out in the area now. Three artillery cruisers, too. That, that's a lot of cruisers! And I don't know if there's, um... Yeah, no one's up to uh, Power Reserve 5 to where they could be using their... Well, I mean, Trent obviously couldn't at all, could he? Use Con F. But no one's up to where they can use their cruise missiles. So, a game not even really having to worry too much about blobbing, I wouldn't say. Barrage has come out now. That one looks to be almost on target. It is going to find one rail again and a little bit of chip damage, I think, on these guys here, too. That's a good missile, for example. These battle cruisers from last rides proven to be very effective because it's difficult to uh, it's difficult to deal with them if you can't kill them in one sitting. They can just get healed up by the support cruisers. And yeah, it looks like with the added support of that artillery, this force from the red team really just going to be repelled quite nicely. And the cruisers reign supreme for now. I'm really nervous for the green team about this side down here. I mean, it really seems to me like it could have been pushed a while ago, but it really just hasn't been. Um, but yeah, they're still kind of on a standstill right now, and the main bases are starting to get mined out now, so it's beginning to be a bit more important to be efficient as we approach perhaps the end game. Uh, it's important to get as many resources as you can out of the um, out of the middle, and it looks like the red team is going to get pushed out of there. A game, I think, still on the space. I don't think he actually got pushed away ever, but I'm not completely sure. Now I'm wondering if Trend can range this with his cruise missiles, and I think that's what he's doing, um, trying to you know mate with the rocks here. He's just trying to get in range of it with his cruise missiles. Sorry again for the frame rate. It's at uh, eight FPS right now, which is pretty good for gaming. Um, <laughs> ALM's being turbo annoying, but I think the Sandstorm should push in here. I mean, you can definitely kill these two, and then perhaps you can go even further. Well, it looks like artillery can do the job just fine, can't it? ALM's are going to go down, and now there's real potential that um, some of the bases can start getting ar uh, artilleryed out. Especially as we're on this um, terrain where there's a big choke point here, but the artillery can attack over the chokes. So they don't need to go through it. Um, that, could be, that could be quite a problem. For oh, this is going to be quite a problem, though. Yeah, Sinister needs to get back to anti-air like as fast as he can. I think there's enough air units that, uh, along with, yeah, see, Cal's got three and Trend's got five, that, you know, enough damage can be done to this guy that he's actually really vulnerable to being killed. Well, he's gonna get away with it. And that, uh, that Galaxian carrier is quite a speedy boy, too, so he's gonna be flying out of there. Powers are six on the way for him now, and I noticed that Cow is also to where he can be firing his. Uh, Cow is also where he can be firing his Galaxian missile barrage. Now that could be problems for the. Um, that could really be problems for the cruisers, especially if they go through that choke point. But so we we have yet to see it get launched, so we'll have to see what happens. I'm waiting for some like beefy missile battery mortars. Oh yeah, like that. That's, that's what I was waiting for, and the Sandskirmers here should easily be able to clean this up now. So that's rather unfortunate for Sinister, I think he's going to lose a lot from that. This Galaxian Carrier is still wanting to be very aggressive here, but I mean his opponent is on equivalent power reserves, and there's no anti-air coverage here, so the air units can, fire, uh, can fly out again. Artillery looks like is attacking Tren here, but it's not going to be landing too many hits. And I think, uh, yeah never mind, I thought one of them had gone down, no not really. So Galaxian Missile Barrage is going to get fired now out in the, this area between the two carriers. And Cow is going to be firing his two, but where is the question? Oh, back here. That's kind of a miss. Well, knowing that those have been fired already, it's tempting, I think, for the green team to push through the choke, but they probably ought to just worry about Staying up on those bases and getting ready for a good um, end game. There's only about 700 RUs left and 500 CUs left on the expansions, and so it's not going to be long before we get to that stage. Last Rite's carry here definitely going to get outclassed, so he should be a bit careful about being in this position. And you can see Trend still just attacking the choke here. There's really a lot of potential that things could go terrible when the green team pushes through the chokes. So that's why I'm saying they shouldn't do it. Um, they have the artifact lead, they have put control of the middle, they should just hold on to those things. Uh, the red team 
The red team can potentially force them out of the middle by attacking their carriers over on this side. But we're starting to get a bit more of an army set up over there, and the control over the choke seems rather uncontestable right now. Doesn't it? So this suddenly is looking very good, I'd say, for the green team, although we are going to have an artillery cruiser going down here, I would believe. Ah, uh, Tren. I think you definitely had him there, but he forgot to launch the rest of the missiles there. Um, so artillery cruiser will be safe, but I'm really worried about how close all these units are. They definitely need to be splitting up. Uh, there's a lot of tools that the red team has got to punish blobbing like that. Not as good as Coalition would with that cruise missile, which A-game um, has access to, although he still is on powers of three. But, yeah, it's just, it's not good, I don't think, to have the units so close together like this. Trent is going to be spamming blind into the choke, but he manages to get a lot of hits here. Oh, no. A-game, don't go through the choke. Don't do it. He's going to go through the choke now. So, uh, Cow is firing the um, missile barrage at the choke point. Cruise missiles are raining in, and you can see there's just, there's a lot of stuff to hit there. There's no vision of it though, so they're firing blind, that's to be fair. Now Sinistro is just out here doing, you know, doing whatever he does. And uh, A-Game's units have almost cleared the choke, but boom, there you go, two artillery cruisers at the same time. These guys are all super low. Would you say that was a bit of a choke? Yeah, it definitely was. And basically all of those units going down now, that's terrible for the green team. Oh, and they're pushing on the choke on this side too, but it looks like it's going to be more successful here. I think Last Rites continues to push this. I yeah, no, he's totally broken the, uh, he's broken his opponent, he needs to just push in here now. Maybe he's backing away like a wounded unit. No, yeah, he's going to go in. That's good. Um, there's actually a lot of potential that 10th Wave's carry could actually go down here, and that'd be, that'd be great, obviously, for this team. Oh, and Sinistro is getting up on top of Trend here, which obviously means the cruise missiles are going to be ineffective. And suddenly this looks fine. Um... They definitely lost a lot going through the choke, and I think maybe A-Game should have waited a bit longer. But now that they're here, uh, they're really going to be in a good spot. Although, Sin, you really don't want to back away from a Conf carrier like this. Oh, dear. Uh. I'm not sure what he's doing. This was this was a confirmed kill, right? Like, maybe you would go down, but probably not, and you were definitely going to kill him. I'm not sure why he backed away from this. Now he's going to take a lot of damage from those cruise missiles. Let's see, A-game getting up to power 4. A whole bunch of railguns pushing out now as well. They're going to be on low ground, so I mean, opponents' railguns would do better, but there's not as many of them. I see a, a huge explosion. I definitely missed a carrier going down just then, so I'll have to apologize for that. Very nicely done by Last Rite, so he's going to take that one down. And now he just turns all of his fire onto that uh, Con F carrier. The missile barrage comes in from Cal, but I don't think that's going to be enough. There are two battle cruisers here after all, and they're rather hardy boys. Gonna be a little tricky to kill them off. Railgun using Mark Target as well, that's nice to see, because obviously these guys have got quite a lot of damage output on them. And I believe that is gonna be one dead Con F carrier before too long. And suddenly it all comes falling apart. Sinistro and A game gonna be double teaming on Cal Schmau. Trend does go down. I expect that we'll see Cal following pretty soon after. <coughs> Excuse me. Scoreline sitting at 4-1, four, four by the way. I don't know if you noticed that. So they could even win by extraction here, but... Yep, that's that's gonna do it. Good, uh, good convergence right there. I really like the way that, that one turned out. And the red team will go down, so A-game, Sinistro, and Last Brights come out on top. What a nice game. Smooth, you know, and there's so many good players in here. It's like you can tell that everyone in the game is very competent. They're not gonna be doing they're not gonna be doing silly things. That's what I like to see. Uh, and I don't cast 3v3 very often, but this one I enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed it too. I've got one more to show you, so stick around, I guess.